All right, welcome back. It's still The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Uh, when we introduced the show, we told you that today is um, April the 1st, and uh, you know, the, the Lagos State Government actually has appealed um, to, for our understanding. You know, uh, let me just give you a bit of an intro. The Lagos State Government has urged the people of the state, especially the residents of Lekki and Ikoyi, to show understanding over the proposed reopening of the Lekki Ikoyi Link Bridge Toll Plaza by the Lekki Concession Company Limited. The appeal was made by Lagos State Commissioner for Reinformation and Strategy, Ben Gaumotosho, and his counterpart in transport, as well as Home affairs, uh, that is uh, Dr. Fredericks Oladende and Prince Anofi Elegushi, respectively, during a stakeholders meeting on Wednesday. Now, they assured the residents of Lagos that the government would look into all the requests and recommendations made by the stakeholders and would respond adequately. Now, the stakeholders meeting was held to engage key residents on the plan of the LCC to reopen the Lekki uh, Ikoyi link bridge, that is today, and it was attended by key stakeholders, uh, including the president of the Lekki Estate Resident Association, Olorogun James uh, Emadoye, human rights activist, journalist and resident. Now, some of the speakers had expressed their views about the plan to reopen the toll plaza, urging the state government to halt the process uh, for now. We're now being joined by our correspondent, Paul George, who is uh, uh, live at the uh, Toll Plaza to bring us up to speed as regards uh, what's going on as we speak. Good morning to you, Paul. Thanks for joining us on The Breakfast. Good morning, Justin. All right. Uh, can you tell us exactly what is going on around you concerning the uh, reopening of the Toll Plaza? So far, has it been reopened? Okay, right now we are at the Lucky M2, the one that leads to Ikoi. I'm actually on the Ikoi Bridge. And when it looks like April Fool, it's actually real. It's not April Fool. Now, when we got here, when we started filming, then a man came out and um, he said he's the MD of Lucky Concession Company Limited. So they spoke to us and he said we shouldn't go play over the same place. So when we, when we talked to him, we, we told him that we're doing our normal duty that we have, were mandated by the Constitution to even report whatever we want to report, as long as we are not infringing on anybody's rights. And then he insisted that we can't go there because that's um, where the, the, the office is going to the place. But we also let them know that this is our job. They are doing their own duties. The security men are here, the police and the robberies for RIS and their men are here. So when we move to start shooting, the man, you know, gave um, instructions to the police to come and destroy our camera. But I insisted and I told um, Tayo to continue shooting. So they all fixed the camera, but we resisted what, um, all their advances at us. So that um, one of the journalists, Edu Jacob, um, his glasses have been seized and his sent back have been collected from him. And that's the situation right now. Edu right. Phillips, Edu Phillips. Okay, fine. I beg your pardon. Olo Phillips, okay, fine. So, invariably, you're telling us that uh, they are not allowing journalists to uh, do their constitutional uh, job at the toll gate. But have you been able to speak to residents um, along that corridor? What, uh, what's, what's the pause that you are feeling at this particular time? I can hear you clearly. Please, can you repeat that? Have you been able to speak to some of the residents around um, the Lekki Koyi access? Uh, what, uh, what are the feedbacks you're getting from residents around that area? No, no, we have not been able to speak to anyone. But what they are doing basically is just running on the sticker or the card that they said everybody must get before you can pass through this toll gate. So that's the situation right now. I'm going to be here. All right. Uh, so, um, uh, so, Paul, George, are you saying that uh, the tolling has actually started? They are collecting fees as we speak right now? Well, it's um, the fee they are collecting is an electronic fee. You know, I guess they want to move away from that, the normal project and hand to hand fee. So, what they are doing right now, you get a, a sticker, and that sticker is just like you're subscribing. 
then you start paying. Then so if you don't have that data, you can't pass through this toll gate at Ikoi. So would it be fair to say that this is a test run for the reopening? I can hear you. Would it be fair to say that this is a test run for the reopening? Oh, please, I can't hear you. Can you say that? Say it again. What Messi asked, uh, what's going on right now? Is it like a test run for the reopening of the toll gate? Paul, if you can hear us, you said that they are not doing cash, hand-to-hand uh, -hand collection. They are doing it electronically. So Messi is asking if it is um, a test run, uh, if, um, so to speak. Oh, okay. I, even though I can hear you, but let me just say something. When we met with the, when the man called us that he wanted to address us, um, he said what they are doing is extraordinary, that they have not started collecting fees. But... I've, I've learned from few cases here that it is electronic fee collection. That's what they are doing. Okay. All right. So, so um, prior to this time, we had feelers and reports that your uh, some residents of Lekki would actually be out protesting. Do you have a group of persons out there uh, protesting the reopening of the toll gate? Right now, there are no um, protesters around. We are the only person here. Um, and some other journalists from other um, media houses. So, that's the situation. All right, uh, thank you so much, um, Paul Georgia, uh, for uh, that particular report. Uh, just try and stay safe, or we'll be getting back to you in the course of um, the show, and then, of course, um, subsequent bulletins uh, to find out exactly what's going on at the field. We do appreciate your time. Oh, all right, thank you so much. All right, Messi, it is actually very interesting what's going on there. I don't know why they are giving or uh, pushing out stiff, um, you know, measures for journalists who just want to ordinarily just do their job. Why are they not um, allowing us work? Well, um, it's a practice that's been going on for a lot of time, uh, for, you know, a while now. And if you look at it, every time you want to have a protest, you have, you know, people, Nigerians uh, coming out to the street to protest against a certain policy, government policy or action. And then they are being, you know, greeted by this obstacle where you have uh, the instrument of government also used against them. At this point, we're talking about the police and the brutality. And so um, in, in the course of this job, uh, you, we've gotten several reports where, you know, journalists had been manhandled and all of that. I remember we speaking with him off camera just before we got on, on air. Uh, he talked about the fact that he's not very settled and that's the reason we're unable to even have, you know, a, a video, a, v a virtual um, interaction at this point in time. But it's really, really saddening because if we still talk about our democracy and we are saying that uh, we need to move forward as a country, then you want to talk about free press and, you know, uh, freedom, no. pr freedom, you know, the, the freedom of the press. But how free is the press in Nigeria? We constantly see all of this. Uh, we were unable to have the major no reason. Yeah, yeah, the major reason we were able to have that, you know, face-to-face -face interaction, you know, via uh, Zoom. Uh, it's because of, you know, the situation on ground and all mm. we're asking, it, it just becomes very difficult and it becomes, you know, very, very saddening. Uh, but it is what it is. We can only pray, as always, and uh, hope that one day we will get it right. We are staying uh, with the development at the Lekki toll gate. Uh, we just uh, spoke with our correspondent, Paul George, who said that uh, uh, a lot is going on there and um, the press is not being allowed to do their job. And uh, a whole lot is actually happening on Twitter. Nigerians are reacting. Lots of people uh, you know, airing their views concerning that um, even the police has come out to say that uh, uh, breakdown of law and order will not be tolerated. Uh, the Lekki uh, Landlords Association They've actually given their position concerning that uh, uh, they are saying that uh, the Lekki target should actually be abolished. Uh, specifically, the Lekki Estate Restaurant and Stakeholders Association Chairman uh, announced the decision of all restaurants which is no to Poland. It is really quite uh, very uh, 
funny. Uh, most Nigerians are saying that uh, this is one of the first things uh, that um, they are doing as uh, you know opening the toll gate when there were major concerns um, raised uh, during the NSAS and protest. Uh, uh, the talk of a police brutality, which is still ongoing even after the NSAS protest has died down, year after Nigerians are still being harassed uh, on the streets. Uh, you know, so why why the suddenness? Why the why are they so quick to want to open um, the Lekki target? And Nigerians are just, Twitter is just a boss with um, the Lekki target um, hashtag. So apart from the hashtag answers, I mean justice for the victims of the answers. Mm. You already understand the position of the government uh, around that. The, the fact that people are one of the requests is that there has to be justice for the victim of answers. But there are a lot of issues that. Uh, this justice for victim of hashtag answers has mm. actually, you know, opened us back to the issue of the legality, you know, the fact that uh, G.D. Johnson cases. talked about it. G.D. Johnson also talked about uh, why we have a toll gate, you know, in the state. And some people are talking, why do you have to toll people who are still in legal state and then you're tolling Lekki to Ikoyo or mm. those who have to get from. So you live in this access, getting out to going to Ikeja, you probably have to pay a toll when you're in the same state. Now, if you, you remember vividly, uh, the Federal High Court in Lagos at the time had uh, recently, uh, there, there, was a, there was a judgment that was recently put out that time, uh, questioning and talking about the fact that, you know, the toll link bridge, the Ikoyi and Lekki toll link bridge is unconstitutional. Mm -hmm. uh, at some point, uh, there was some uh, securing of stay of execution to that. Uh, stay of, of execution, that's to that say that, you know, it should remain closed. So th there are a lot of issues. The legality Pendulum. of the toll itself. Mm -hmm. uh, you, the argument that some people have put out is that, oh, where were the residents, where were some of these persons when, you know, the, the, the government came up with the idea of, of um, you know, I mean, making the roads motorable because the roads were really bad. But let's even go back to the idea of government and governance. And so what was the essence? Mm. So the people get into a contract. It's a social contract. Government is a social contract. People will pay their taxes pay in turn. And then you provide you know, basic infrastructure. And road is one of them. So that's number one. Uh, th there's a lot of questioning going on as regards the rationale behind having a toll in the city of Lagos. That's on the one hand. Another question again is also the issue of ownership. Uh, people have constantly questioned who owns, because <laughs> the there's LCC. no transparency, who owns the LCC. And, you know, it's also another issue right. uh, mm -hmm. that's still ongoing. Well, um, really, really sad. Uh, you have some quarters saying that there's been some settlement has gone on. But uh, like I mentioned, it has really gone beyond uh, justice for the victim of SARS, the hashtag answers protest, as it were. It goes beyond that a lot of issues have been, you know, raised as regards. This is actually, you know, like an opener to all these other concerns. Like we mentioned earlier on the pending court matters, you have the issue of uh, ownership and transparency. You also want to look at the issue of development. Some persons have questioned what development the Lagos State Government has brought to this part, you know, of Lagos State. Uh, there, there are no general hospitals, you don't have primary schools, you don't have, you know, markets. And, and so what, what? why are the people having to pay extra tax? Because that's what it means. Tolling the people, I mean, the, the toll gate will mean the people are paying extra, apart from the tax that they are paying. So people are already asking, and this is what government and governance is about. We're talking about the social contract here, where government says uh, we will do X, Y, Z. In turn, you're expected to do X, Y, Z. So we'll provide basic amenities and infrastructure. You would give us your rights. So the people who have submitted their will and say, hey, government, take a group of persons. We submit our will to you. We'll pay our taxes. And in turn, we're expected to do X, Y, Z. So th this is a very valid issue. And in a democratic dispensation, one would expect that the government should not use, you know, the sticker approach. But, mm -hmm. you know, th th this is a form where people need to sit back. It's an, almost an election year. It's time that th th those who are calling the shots, those who are uh, you know, leading, uh, those who are governors and president and what have you, sit down and have negotiation, listen to the cry of the people. But but most times, it feels like we're always very, you know, forceful. We want to have our way against others. I'm hoping that the Lagos State government will pay attention to the cries of, you know, Nigerians, Lagosians here, uh, to some of the concerns that they have raised. And then let's look at it. So uh, what's really the answer? If the government has, you know, an answer to some of these issues that have been raised, let them. So it goes beyond saying we're asking for justice for 
you know, the uh, victims of, of Lecky. the yeah. Lecky incident that happened in 2020. So that's what it is. And we're hoping that as a responsive government, they will pay attention. It's not a time for us to begin to, you know, um, get into that conflict and war. And then the police coming out to say people should not protest. But from the reports that we're getting, is this feels like it's a test run, you know, to the actual uh, thing that would definitely happen, maybe trying to see, you know, what it is. But the people are asking, why do we even have to pay extra? Extra mm. when we're already paying our taxes and what what do we get in turn for paying this extra who even owns this uh, you know um the fees that we're generating from the tour to and all of that. Let's also look at the issue. Uh, you also look at the fact that productive time is also being wasted at that point. You talk about the traffic. About traffic. The traffic. Now, you, you, if you live around this axis, you want to agree with me that when you get to the Adja axis, uh, that's the... Um, the VGC point around that road. So there's a construction that's going on and that also causes a lot of traffic. Coupled with the fact that when these petrol stations, the queue return from time to time, you find this queue returning, it causes a lot of traffic. And productive time is also being reduced. Uh, when you have an economy that is not productive, I mean, for instance, you're supposed to be somewhere and you can't get to work where you're supposed to be. You're, you're already losing productive hours and uh, an economy that's losing productivity, productive time, you know, will become less productive. So it calls for a lot. We're already wasting money uh, via wasting time and wasting manpower, and that's not really good for us. So let's come to a table and have this dialogue and understand the concerns of the people, and that's what government is. If you talk about the policy circle, you know, in the policy circle, the people would actually make, you know, this input into the policy circle. It comes out as, as outputs. Government should pay attention to it. Uh, but most times, you find that policies do not reflect the interests of the people. And whose interest do we have all of these tolls for? It's, it's a question. So a the toll, is it, it, does it, is it for the interest of the people? And would government begin to say, because if you look at the, the roads that we already have, Let's not even forget, uh, these were roads that were constructed during the, the military, uh, you know, era and the government. How come they did not? These are federal roads. How come we don't have, you know, tolls on these roads? Yeah. I, I don't, don't know if you're getting the point. I do. So. I do. It's really, really sad. We, we, we need to understand that our policies and our actions and aid actions should be reflecting the interest of the people. There should be no disconnect at this point in time. Nigerians are going through a lot. I always say that I feel like being a Nigerian, you should be, uh, there should be some sum of, sum of allowance and salary that should be set aside be uh, just because you are a Nigerian. Not All to even right. talk about Lagos. Uh, a special consideration should be given to Lagosians. <laughs> all right. Uh, that's uh, all we can take on all of that. Uh, that's as much as we can take because uh, the more we talk about it, uh, it, it gets uh, you know very very um, emotional. Because at the end of the day, Nigerians, uh, you know, I feel we are getting, we are being exploited. We we pay for taxes. Uh, the commensurate of infrastructure we are seemingly not really getting, and we are even asked to to pay more. Well, we'll leave it at that. We'll leave the discussion at that. But let's uh, just continue to make a reasonable conversation uh, across the various social media platforms. Let's make our voices and our, our intentions, and of course, uh, known. So, the government, we know that uh, we know what is right, and we will keep on demanding, you know, for justice and ensure that uh, we get what is due to us as Nigerians, as um, residents. Uh, uh, more to come on the breakfast this time around. Uh, we will be looking at what is next for the Nigerian Football Federation, Nigeria. Uh, our team is not um, going to Qatar. You know what just what's happening? Eguavon has uh, uh, stepped aside as uh, the coach of uh, uh, the Super Eagles. So just what is next for Nigeria Football Federation? In a moment, I'll uh, we'll be getting some you know answers to all of these questions. Stay with us. <laughs>